Wavical is an award-winning data and analytics company based in Chicago with a national presence. As a provider of award-winning cloud data, analytics, and AI solutions and services, Wavical combines deep technical expertise and industry knowledge with the proprietary automation tools to support the rapid shift to modern data architectures, real-time insights, and AI. Wavical Data Solutions is proud to grow through almost 100% referral. With solid delivery reputability, proudly leveraging the ability to meet clients where they are to unlock the power of data. Wavical Data Solutions. Hello, I'm Dr. Beverly Wright, and welcome to Tag Data Talk. With us today, we have Pratik Shivastava, Principal Data Scientist with Cummins, and he is so dedicated that he has arrived on crutches. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Beverly. Thanks for hosting me here. Yeah, crutches is a different story. Let's not get into that today. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to remember <laughs> if I've ever had a Tag Data Talk guest that arrived on crutches. So yes. I'm very pleased to have you on Tag Data Talk, yeah. talking about analytics challenges specific to the manufacturing sector. Right, right, right. So let's start off with um, a little bit of background. Tell us why are you so cool besides you know, running around podcast interviews <laughs> with a crutchy. No, I think I'm cool because uh, what I do, I don't, I didn't go to school for that. Oh. So uh, I did not uh, study statistics in college, uh, but I started working and then realized this is a really cool field. And this is just for like all the people who wants to get into this field. Uh, don't let anything stop you. Interesting. Um, because uh, I, I had background in computer science and yeah. information systems, but mm -hmm. not specifically any analytics as such. So... Uh, but I took like a lot of trainings throughout my career to enhance my career. And that's how I got where I am right now. Nice. I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you hear about um, uh, people will come to me for mentorship yeah. and, and as if I have something to say, but I don't know. They think I do. But they'll come to me and say, like, I have a scientific background. Yeah. And sometimes that's a really good fit because you can apply the scientific method to some of the data science work that we do. Yeah. So um, very good. Thank yeah. you for that encouragement. So we're talking today about some of the analytics methods that are in manufacturing specifically. Um, so can you tell us, like, when we talk about data science and AI that it's in manufacturing, what would you consider to be sort of the maturity level? Like, are they the, the first ones out of the gate? Are they sort of slower to adopt? Like, where do they stand in your mind? I think, like, most of the manufacturing companies that, that are there, they've been there for a very long time, like, hun not hundreds of years, then mm -hmm. at least... 50, 60 years or something like that. Yeah. So because of that, there is like some rigidness in the organizations. So they are not the first movers when you talk about analytics because that's not their core area as well. Mm. So so it takes them a while to get there. But once they get there, I think they, they can they can really, really do wonders. Yeah. There are so many use cases that, that are specific to manufacturing and analytics. Uh, and we definitely need people who can solve those challenges. Isn't it funny though that um, the, the people at younger companies they sometimes feel like, oh, my company's not mature enough or not old enough or yeah. we don't have enough resources yet. And then people at older companies yeah. are saying, oh, well, my company's too mature yeah. and has relied too long. And so is there a happy middle ground? Like what I mean, as far as like manufacturing in particular, you know, it seems like they're a little bit um, later in the adoption curve. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. But at the same time, I feel whenever there is a new technology that comes in, yeah. like, like what is happening with Gen AI right now, yeah. I feel like every company is trying to adopt it as fast as possible. Right. And that's where you get the sweet sweet point where uh, where both things are happening together, where the old companies are adopting, newer companies are developing. Um, it's it's a good merging point where we are right now. Are we are we just going to all follow the retail CPG? Let's get in line behind them. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us about some of the use cases that are in manufacturing. Like, are, are y'all doing some cool things? Yeah, definitely. There are some use cases which are very specific to uh, manufacturing. Uh, one of the things that come to mind is uh, the quality product quality that we call it. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there is a lot of production production processes that goes on when we are building any any part, and any one thing that happens inside it, if if that changes the whole dynamic, then we might end up with a faulty product, and mm. then we we want to ensure that we have the highest quality available. So uh, I compare it with the uh, with the use case of uh, credit card frauds. Mm -hmm. Right, it would happen once in a thousand, uh, but then it could happen, and then yeah. once it happens, you really need to figure out like why it happened. So the same thing happens with manufacturing when, when there are several 
parts that we are building we want to make sure that every part has has some um, um, some good sense that has gone into that and that's 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 where uh, the this particular use case comes into manufacturing okay and then there are other things like supply chain optimization that's that's everywhere uh, yeah. we are getting parts from all over the place um, so yeah so supply chain optimization and then quality. Mm. But let me double click on quality a little bit because sure. that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's quality process, there's quality of your suppliers, there's quality, you're talking about the actual tangible widget or things, whatever right. asset that somebody's building, right? Right. So uh, at least like with the company where I work, mm -hmm. we have like different types of quality, like product quality, supplier quality, warranty quality. So we ensure our products are of highest quality and we are able to provide them. So we support, we provide warranty for them. Oh, and see. then there is lots of analytics that goes on to, into that process as well, just to make sure that the product that we are delivering is of highest quality. Mm. And uh, coming back to the point of analytics, takes there. Uh, we look at all those warranty claims and mm -hmm. try to make sure that those don't occur over and over again. Gotcha. Uh, another use case that comes into this is uh, is predictive maintenance. You know, because all of these uh, my engines that we are delivering are, are computers now. So all of these are IoT devices that are that are in the wild. Uh, we get all the data back from them, and using that data, we can try to predict like when when a scheduled maintenance should happen in any of those. Engines. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. I I think I told you when we were at the a conference recently. Yeah. I, I told you about one of the clients that we had and they had this giant asset it had all these iot devices on it and they weren't quite sure like yeah where's the data even go? <laughs> like what do we do with it uh, yeah it, I, are you seeing trends like that in manufacturing where i know i got to get some iot devices i know i need to do some ai but they're you know yeah. sort of stuck on like collecting the data i, I think that has happened so because uh, i mean even even uh, here we have been collecting this iot data for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, initially when the data comes in nobody knows like how it is structured and how to even make it readable oh. so so a lot of effort goes into the data engineering part of it and then the data comes in already we have go we have like several years of data worth accumulated like yeah. accumulated till till we get something out of that data so yes i agree completely with you um uh this kind of data while it is a lot um it takes a while to get there where you can use that data right yeah. and um are, is a manufacturing manufacturing sector um, doing other things that everybody else is doing, like people analytics to how, you know, to retain yes. manufacturing or sorry, marketing analytics, like operational improvement. They're doing all that too, right? Yes, okay. yes, definitely. But so the thing that, yeah, there are some specific use cases, but then yeah. there are a lot of generic use cases that that is happening everywhere. Right. Okay. One of the newer ones that I have recently found out about is like the energy analytics you know mm. so because we are spending a tons of energy and then we we as a company also want to be like carbon neutral um, we want to make sure that whatever energy that we are using goes into the plants and then that is more sustainable than than the previous methods that we've been using right so there also we are using some analytics to figure out what would be the best way of uh, getting that energy nice we um tag data science and ai did a joint event with tag sustainability mm. And that topic came up of um, energy and yeah. how hard it is to have enough energy to Ooh. to maintain some sort of sustainability in environment. Right. So I thought that was a really interesting um, discussion and one that kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but of all of them, you know, of all the different things that happen in manufacturing with data science today, it sounds like IoT is sort of the um, the the thing that makes it unique or that you see. The uh, opportunity is that right? That is true. Uh, that is there. Uh, the another one with with the current uh, AI uh, boom, mm -hmm. I would say is uh, is using. So a lot of times, what happened was uh, uh, the the trucks would go to service stations, but the the technicians would write like handwritten notes, and oh, then there yes. is a lot of manual part involved in that process still i mean it will always be there because there are people who are fixing those trucks whenever something is something is going wrong with them uh, but we were not able to use that data uh, like since the advent of time i guess um, so now uh, with this new technologies we can do build better summarizations and actually use that data to build our future products right so that is one area where i'm really excited about that uh, nice. that could help us in so building much data better products before it was it was why was it collected then was it collected because you have to do uh, it right so uh, there are like several reasons you would collect data so mm -hmm. there are several audits that go through uh, and the data is collected uh, not for analytics as such but like for manual help 
right? right? So if somebody gets a similar claim, they can go to the past claims and see like what what somebody has written about that. So in humans can read it. But machines were not able to read it b- I see. before, I see. Um, and it was not very structured as well. So uh, it would it would write a lot of coding that would go inside that text. Yeah. So that kind of thing was happening. Okay, so manual processing of um, like text and notes and comments Correct. that were originally taken because of operations or regulatory yes. needs yes. or whatever now can be used as Now scale. can be used as well yeah. and which would help us very significantly wow. if we start to use it. In a, in That's a, a huge opportunity. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it would go into both like new product development as well as um, using that data to make sure that the products that we have in existence are, are of highest quality. Like it, like it. Yeah. So, um, in manufacturing, you mentioned a couple things that are specific challenges that y'all have with data science and AI. Mm-hmm. So, things like a lot of times manufacturing companies are older. Mm-hmm. Um, you didn't say this specifically, but I think sometimes, and this is uh, cumulative with some of the manufacturing clients I know, um, the product kind of runs the, they sort of run the house. Like if the product's doing well, yes. it kind of just takes care of everything and there's not a drive for data science and AI. Yeah. Um, the vertical in and of itself can be a little slower to um, a- adopt mm-hmm. uh, newer technologies. Um, and so the age of companies and all these things kind of factored in together. Um, are there other special challenges that, that are in? I mean, plus the problems themselves are pretty complex sometimes. Yeah, right? uh, that's I mean, what I was going to come to. Yeah. yeah, because like there is a lot of uh, regulations, uh, a lot of... Uh, paperwork that is inside every every one of those aspects right uh, so even if we want to use that there are multiple contracts that that have gone through and the process itself are super complicated like mm. we are translating a mechanical engineering problem into analytics and with without knowing all the rules of how how those things works inside mm-hmm. it, it's a very hard thing to do and uh, the throughout my experience i what i have found out what helps an analytics process is to have somebody who has business experience in that domain to sit sit alongside with you. While I can know the uh, the technical aspects really well, I really know some those need someone who who knows the business as good as I do uh, mm. in the in the technical sense. Gotcha. So so that is that that has been a, a really big help while building any of the product. What are some other hacks? Like that's a really good hack. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to figure out like. Knowing that, you know, maybe this vertical can be a little not jumping on it first (laughs) when it comes to things like AI and new technologies and knowing that we've got older kind of products and um, and that it's it's difficult because the problems themselves are difficult. So one thing you mentioned is um, a way to solve this is you got to have multidisciplinary. Yes. And um, I know manufacturing companies, from my experience, have been very engineer happy. Right. They're they're big on engineers, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, depending on yeah. whatever the industry is for doing everything. Right. I mean, there's one company I know that is a chemical company, mm-hmm. and they have um, PhDs in chemical engineering that are like in their marketing department. Mm. Just just because that's what they do. They hire chemical engineers. Oh, wow. um, so having the multidisciplinary mm-hmm. um, is a great suggestion. What other advice would you give to these manufacturing, you know, that are trying to get through this? So um, what I felt is that at least in our company, what, what we have put a little bit more focus on is to do more of the trainings. Uh, so for for instance, the, as I was saying that there are like there are a mechanical engineers who are doing lots of different things like product engineers because they come from mechanical background they can they can figure out a bigger complex problem into smaller things mm-hmm. so they are the project managers as well but at the same time if they get some exposure to more cross disciplinary uh, stuff. Uh, like studying some analytics, mm. I'm, I'm trying to say that if they can get some trained, uh, they can even help the data scientist build those models. Nice. So, so that that has definitely helped in our in our organization. Okay. What about um, are there things that you can do with senior leadership, or do you think are they the ones that are faster to uh, to jump on this, or is it more ground up? Like, what do you see? Uh, so. Uh, I mean, I think from my perspective, I work in a technical team. So my director and my uh, the people who are who are managing me, move, all of them come from technical background. Mm-hmm. So in my uh, in my experience, they are the ones who are already jumping into these things. They are the coming. They are the ones who are coming with ideas. Mm-hmm. So so that has helped us 
बट नॉट श्योर अबाउट हाउ वुड इट वर्क आउट इन एनी अदर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट इज नॉट वेरी टेक्निकली इट कैन बी ट्रिकी फॉर श्योर लाइक इफ यू ट्राइंग टू गेट अम ट्राइंग टू एडवांस एंड ब्रिंग मोर एआई टेक्नोलॉजी इनटू एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यू डोंट हैव सीनियर लीडरशिप राइट अम दैट कैन डेफिनेटली बी ट्रिकी सो आई डोंट नो इफ यू हैड एनी वेज ऑफ of looking at um looking at how manufacturing has so- kind of solved this mm. because it seems like that if you make one little change in manufacturing it can make giant dividends or di- right. giant differences maybe that's the solution <laughs> yeah true that that could be the solution yeah i mean i've uh, the leadership like top down if it if it is fo- if it focuses on something then then it could be achieved it, there are business in- incentives for everybody else to achieve the same goals mm-hmm. so i definitely think that the leadership uh, should uh, think about these things like should up should think about these solutions yeah, yeah. so for those out there cuz um a lot of our listeners are technical uh-huh. how can you get in the ear like how can you help influence to mm. the leaders to uh, to try something new or to do you have to just kind of show this is how much we can save or here's how much we can make that's what i have felt okay. from my experience yeah. uh, as as you if you can provide a value to it i mean if even if it is a rough ballpark number mm-hmm. that definitely helps move the needle a little bit mm-hmm. but then of course there are cases where uh, where you have to work through the the political systems around the organization. Oh, I see. Okay. So, <laughs> it really comes down to people. <laughs> yes, it down comes down to people. As if you can have like good relations and like if you can talk through them, uh then then definitely uh it it take it 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 takes the whole uh, direction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's tricky though. Um we're saying just go do these things that are very very hard. <laughs> But um yeah, yes. so what uh, what I do you think I wish I had a hack for that. <laughs> oh, I know. What do you think the future might hold for um data science and AI in manufacturing? Is it going to be more of the same like now not just a handful of the top 10% of manufacturers are using IoT in a severe way but everybody is or is it going to be more of the same or is it going to be like some dramatic shift or is there a gen AI play in here? uh there is definitely jani i play in here uh that's what i have realized from last several of my meetings uh where uh, there is a lot of buzz about that uh while we would not directly go into it like head first uh we would definitely be thinking about those things for a very long time now um as i said right this jani i helps us with new product development so there are several uh, white papers that we have written uh, over several years which which points out what uh, what goes into a new engine right and then we over several years we have found out what are the problems with those things if you combine those two together you have like a new draft produced for a newer set of engines mm-hmm. so that that gives us a very good starting phase which have already uh, seen through what what are the past deficiencies um, so i definitely feel that jani i would come into picture but at the same time since there are a, there are a lot of use cases which have not been explored yet yeah um, even like smaller things like supply chains uh, with with the newer set of technologies that we have available with with the new compute computation we have available mm-hmm. we are uh, currently been able to improve our model severely uh, oh. due to that yeah so i feel like both things are going to stay here for a while um, some gen ai will definitely keep on coming in mm-hmm. and it would grow bigger as the time goes uh, but there is a tra- there there is a tra- lot of traditional analytics methods uh, that would also be uh, in use for for the time being right right yeah. do you think that generative ai helps um increase the number of hands that are going to touch it like um compared to data science it would it you would. know i feel like it's more user friendly and it's more for the people do you it, agree it, it would it would definitely democratize the whole data science yeah. area yeah yeah it's uh, interesting yeah it would i mean i don't i don't see that a lot of business people will directly go in and start coding tomorrow using yeah, gen ai right. but but it would definitely help them come up with new use cases you can they can think of something and then they can ask gen ai to developed something out of there and then the things would go to a data scientist to actually implement it okay uh, but uh, but it helps with the conceptualization it will help with con- yeah. Con- yeah. conceptualization okay yeah. i yep. see okay yeah. what uh final piece of advice would you give to people that are trying to better understand the analytics challenges specific to manufacturing uh it's all about people i think uh, i mean there when you when you build a system 
thinking about the people who will be using it yeah you would be able to build a better system uh so uh, the reason i'm saying is because i see the data that comes in and when the data comes in the front end structures are also not there for them to use it properly you know mm. there are not enough guidelines uh for them to build like better data uh so so the people who will be using um, uh who will be who are in manufacturing and then who wants to use it I, my suggestion is that uh, just build your processes around people and then you you will succeed build your processes around people yeah. and add the technology add the technology yes. for the people not yeah. no don't build around the technology correct wow that's really good advice yeah. thank you so much to pratik shivastava principal data scientist at cummins for joining us today on tag data talk yeah thank you so much thanks beverly for inviting me thank you